Hello again, I'm going to demonstrate Snap to Grid with App Inventor Blocks. And to show you how Snap to Grid works, we have a checkerboard here. And these checker, uh, this checkerboard is 320 by 320. The squares are 40 pixels by 40 pixels. And this checker piece is 40 by 40. It's an image sprite. And when I drag it around, notice that when I drop it, it jumps to one of these squares. It doesn't just drop in the middle. It jumps to the closest square, which is usually the kind of behavior you're going to want for uh, this type of a game. So, let's see how this works. Before we see the actual blocks to make that move, let's look at the formula that's used to do it. <clears throat> uh, since the X and the Y dimensions are the same for each square, 40 wide, 40 high, this same formula applies to both uh, X and Y. Uh, also, this upper left corner here that I'm pointing to with the mouse cursor, mouse pointer, this is zero, 0, on the canvas. This position here is X is 40 and Y is 0, 80, 0, 120, 0. One sixty, one eighty, two hundred, rather, one eighty, forty, eighty, one twenty, one sixty, two hundred. 240, 280, and 320. Same thing in the y direction. So those are important numbers. You add 40 to the previous value all the way up to 320. Now the actual width of the canvas while it is 320 pixels wide you can only address from 0 to 319. So the last pixel is actually 319, not 320. And the first pixel is 0 rather than 1. So let's look at these example formula blocks. If you're not familiar with how the quotient block, math block, works, it's like when you divide in a long division and you have a quotient and a remainder. The quotient gives you the whole number part. A remainder would give you the, what's left over. So thinking of this as just giving you the quotient of this division problem which is 0 divided by 40. The result of that is 0. When you multiply that by 40, 0 times 40 is 0. Look at this next example. And this would this example would be where your checker piece is in this position here. Now this example is if we move it to 20, position 20, which would be about halfway, about right here, and 20 divided by 40 is 0. 0 times 40 is 0. The reason we're multiplying this by 40 is because we want to adjust it to move to these positions, 40, 80, 120, all the way up to 280. So 
let's look at the the highest number that in the X value that you can have which will still snap to this zero position would be if X is 39 so if we move it almost all the way to 40 it's still still going to snap back to 39 it's not in this case because of an adjustment that I made so that when I drag it drags in the center of the checker piece but the actual X value for this checker piece if it is 39 would cause it to snap back <coughs> so we're still getting 0 here because 39 divided by 40 is zero and you have a large remainder but it's still the quotient is zero multiply that by 40 you get zero now suppose that x is 40 40 divided by 40 is 1 1 times 40 is 40 so in that case once we get the x goes to 40 it jumps up to the next square when we drop it if let's say that it's 60 x is 60 60 divided by 40 is 1 that's your quotient and you multiply that by 40 and you get 40 it would snap to this location 79 divided by 40 where the checker piece is right before it gets to the 80 position 79 divided by 40 is still 1. 1 times 40 is 40. Now once you get each of these other squares works the same way. Once you get up to 240 which is right here, second to last square, 240 divided by 40 would give you 6 times 40 is 240 because our our counting is 0 base 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 okay so it's in the sixth square 0 base and that's why we get 240 if we're at 260, which is right around here, 260 divided by 40 would still be 6 times 40 is 20, 240. So it would jump back here. The largest number where it would still stay in the 6th square would be 279. 279 would snap it back to 240. Okay, now if it is 280, which is the last, the beginning of the last square, 280 divided by 40 times 40 gives you 280. Three hundred divided by 40 is let's see that would be would give you seven ignore the point five so we're in square seven seven times four forty is two hundred eighty for the 300 also 280 and then 390 divided by 319 divided by 40 would still put it in the 7 square 7 times 40 is 280 okay so that's how it works works the same way in Y when I drag it down it snaps to that square 
So what you need is a dragged block for the check piece. And like I said before, I modified this instead of using current X, current Y plugged in plugged into the X and Y. I allowed for the checker piece to center under the fingertip and that is done by taking the width and dividing of the checker piece dividing it by two and subtracting that from current X and current current Y the height would be the same it would be 40 divided by 2 which is 20 current Y minus 20 so it, it moves up the checker piece halfway so that it's under the fingertip Okay, and then the actual blocks to snap to grid for the checker piece are here. Rather than using 40 and 40 for these values, I've tried to make this more general for different size checker boards and checker pieces. So it would be. Excuse me. It would be the quotient of the x value from here divided by the square width, which is 40, and multiplied by the square width, which is 40. So that's going to work for any of your squares in the x direction same thing for the y direction square height is 40 so y divided by the square height of 40 times the square height and that is how you get your piece to snap to grid now perhaps I should have shown here If we don't adjust for the centering under the fingertip and just try that out, then you'll see what it would look like if you just drag it notice that it's almost to the next square but it jumps back but once I have it beyond that point, it goes to the next square. So that's it. And thank you for watching.